All right, guys, so let's jump right into this video today and let's talk about iPhone footage. So let's get to the basics. We all know that iPhone footage is usually over sharpened, over saturated, uh, the white balance changes quite a bit, and it falls apart in low lighting. And so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to color grade that footage to make it look really, really good like the videos you just saw before. And I'm going to be showing you how to do that for free. Now, whenever you're shooting the footage, it's very important to pay attention to how you're shooting the footage on the iPhone. I would definitely not use the regular camera app in this phone because you can get a lot of control out of other apps like Filmic Pro, which is my first solution I recommend that you try whenever you're shooting on the iPhone. I don't know why I got stuttered up right there. But yeah, if you're shooting on the iPhone, there are two solutions. Filmic Pro and I really do like the moment app now both apps are really really great apps you get all control of your camera for the most part but I really like the moment app because it gives you a flatter picture profile so it's easier for me to grade that in post now you don't have to use those two apps because I do understand that those apps are paid but if you find another app that lets you control the white balance and lock it and you find an app that lets you take down some of the saturations gives you a flatter picture profile then that would be perfect as well these are just the two apps that I like and that I've used over the years. First thing that I'm gonna do is make sure I'm shooting at the highest resolution. And then the second thing is making sure that I lock that white balance down. And then the last thing, I'm gonna be switching over to the flyest profile that I can get. And that's pretty much it. Throughout my shooting, I'm gonna be changing my cameras up. I'm gonna be checking to make sure that my white balance is locked down. Now with that being said, we're gonna jump right into the studio so we can talk about some color corrections and how to grade the iPhone footage to make it look really professional. Now software that you wanna go download is DaVinci Resolve. Uh, there's a free version that let you do everything that I'm gonna show you today. However, if you wanna buy the app, which I strongly recommend because it's an incredible app. And if you haven't learned this app yet, uh, it can really be a good asset to you as a creative because a lot of Hollywood films and commercials and things use this application. Now today I'm gonna to show you the workflow that I do for each and every one of my edits. Now if I'm editing my project in Premiere or sometime I edit in Final Cut Pro for different reasons, I always color grade my clips in DaVinci Resolve. And so I'm gonna show you how I do that. So first over here in Premiere Pro, the first thing that you wanna do after you have your project made and you're ready to go into the color grading and color correction process is you want to go to the top, hit file, and then you wanna export and then go to Final Cut Pro XML. Now you're gonna export that where your project is. So I'm gonna go right over here. I'm gonna export that file right here. Now, once you have that exported, you're gonna get an error code usually uh, because it doesn't really translate everything. So it's okay if you get that code. So you're gonna go over to DaVinci Resolve. So I'm gonna actually just select LUT Maker right here. Um, and I'm gonna delete the old clip that is in here. So when you open up this, you should get the first panel. Again, I'm gonna delete this right here. So you get the first panel. Now what you wanna do is go to the top, hit File, hit Import, project or import timeline you go to import click that and go find that file that you just exported so right here here is the xml file so i'm going to hit open and i'm going to hit okay you're probably going to get an error code here as well do you want to select another folder to search hit no it's okay not everything is going to translate like i said before but the important thing is that you get those clips and that you can see them on the timeline so with that being done, the next thing is, is you wanna go over here to this color wheel folder thingy on Dimension Resolve. And once you're here, you get your clips. Now, the first thing that I like to do, uh, because when you're shooting flat profiles, you're obviously pulling out the saturation, you're pulling out the contrast. And so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this wheel icon right here, the wheel, the color wheels. And once I hit that, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna crank up that contrast to about 1.3 is what I usually go for right there. That's fine. The next thing is I'm gonna bump up the saturation. And I do this every single time I color grade. So right there, usually I'm about 75. Now the next thing is you have your scopes over here. If you don't see your scopes, go over here and you can turn your scopes on or you can go up to workspace or um, view and you can turn on your scopes now the reason why you need these scopes on is to be able to see where your image is at so right now on the screen I can already tell you that there are some points that are too bright however without these scopes I wouldn't be able to tell if that was just my computer screen 
or if it was actually too bright or too dark. So as you can see on the waveform right here, it's way too bright. You don't want this to go above this line over here. If it's like a ceiling up here on the top where these waveforms are, that means that you're losing data because of how bright or if it's at the bottom, how dark the image is. So to fix that, we're gonna go over here and the first thing that we're gonna do is bring down our gain. You can think of gain as like the brightest, like bright or how bright the image is. So we're gonna bring the gain down just by clicking that wheel, scrolling down. And I want to be maybe right around there. So next, what you can see is we're not actually touching black. Like on this waveform right here, it's not actually that dark. We can darken this image up a little bit more. So uh, if you can think of these if you can think of these color wheels from left to right of uh, dark starting at the left and kind of getting lighter as you go to the right um, and don't don't think of offset as the lightest think of gain as the lightest because in gamma you're going to be controlling your shadows in gain you're going to be controlling all of the things on the other side of your shadows which is more brighter things and lift is going to control the darker things so with lift right here, we're gonna just pull that down as we're looking at our waveform. We're not looking at the image because again, we know that our waveform gives us the true data. So right there, I like that. So if you can see right over here in the shadows, that looks really, really good. Now right over here, and as you look at this iPhone poster in the back, it looks pretty light. So. What offset allows you to do is kind of fix the difference of the two. So right over here on offset, I'm just going to crank it down. So it gets me, it makes me be able to work with more of my midtones. So right there. All right, so that's looking a lot better. But however, I still want to mess with my gamma a little bit. I always at least touch it to see what it looked like. So I'm going to go down. Uh, see, in this instance, Gamma is working really well with the iPhone um, with the iPhone banner in the background. So I'm going to turn that down a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is actually go back over to Offset. Sorry, I, I messed up so I did Undo. Command Z is Undo. So I'm actually going to go back over to Offset and crank that back up just a little bit like that. And now there is a lot of contrast, but it's not because of the contrast slider, it's actually because of saturation. Whenever you bring saturation into an image, it actually introduces contrast because you're able to see clearly different colors from others. So if you can see these buildings over here are just kind of way too bright and they're way too contrasty. So the way I'm gonna fix that is I'm gonna bring my saturation maybe down to 70. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. And in this instance, I'm actually gonna bring my contrast down because I'm gonna add some sharpness back in in just a second. So I'll get some of that information back. So right there, turn my contrast down. Now, the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna go right over here at the bottom right here. You can hit that second wheel. I always like to go in here and add some mid-tone mid, mid details so that I get you know more sharpness in the image. I like my images to be clean. You don't have to do this, but this is my process that I do. So then I go in and a color boost, I'm gonna guess that when I crank up this color boost a little bit, in these buildings over here, you're gonna see a little bit more color and in this side brick, that's where you're gonna see the color boost. Could be wrong, it's more in like mid-tones. So let's see. So with the color boost, actually let's go the other way. Yeah, so right there, you can actually see that I am, I got color, more color here, more color over here. Now, now it's time to actually look at the image and think about what we want to do. Um, it's kind of saturated, maybe a little bit too saturated for me. I'm not sure yet. So let me play the image back and see. Actually, no, that's great. That's a really, really good image. So now what I do to get this back over into Premiere Pro, because I don't export in DaVinci Resolve unless I created a project in DaVinci Resolve, is you right click on the clip, do generate 3D LUT and do the 33 point cube 
and I'm just gonna name that one and then export that into the folder, hit save. Now, what you're gonna do is go back over to Premiere Pro and you're gonna throw a Lumetri color effect on this clip. So what I like to do is I go over here. Now, again, this is my process. This is just what I like to do. And this mainly in case I use this clip later on, I don't have to go find it and add the color back to it. So what I do is I click over to master and then I go to my effects and I throw on that Lumetri color right there. Now, what I'm going to do is hit the creative tab and go to the LUT look and I'm gonna browse and I'm gonna find that LUT that I just made, hit open, boom. There you go, super duper easy. It couldn't be that simpler, like that's all you do. Now the reason why I like to create LUTs and then just import them is so that I can keep my native timeline in Premiere Pro so that I don't have any issues with graphics or anything not translating over to DaVinci Resolve. So um, I actually like how that looks a lot. It looks really good. So one thing that you can try uh, sometime I see if it's gonna work. It depends on how closely together the clips are. It's seeing if the LUT I made works on the same clips. So I'm gonna try that right quick and see how that looks. So go over to Master, Lumetri Color, copy it, click over here, and then just paste it under Master. So yep, yeah, you can see, and I'm actually gonna use that because that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna try the same thing on this clip. So click the clip, go over, go up to master, and then I'm pasting it by hitting control V. So on this one, you can see that it really doesn't work because I lose the plane, the blue in the sky is way too blue. So I'm gonna hit command Z to undo that. Let's jump back over to DaVinci Resolve, find that clip and let's color grade it. So now, you know the process, so I'm just gonna walk you through it as I do it pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go back over to the first tab. I'm gonna get my contrast slider, slide it up till I get some contrast. On this one, because the sky is so blue, I'm gonna stay in the 12, the 1.2 range, and then I'm gonna take my saturation up to about, I'm actually gonna go towards 68 right here because the sky is already pretty blue. So now, the next thing that I'm gonna do, is in this clip you can actually see the waveform is pretty pretty good already like there's not a lot of peaking on the low ends or the high ends so i'm just gonna play with it a little bit to see what i like so i'm gonna bring down the gain and to make the buildings pop a little bit i'm going to bring the bottom all the way down like that right there see what that looks like I actually don't like it, so I'm gonna bring it up just a tad, just like that. And then the gamma, I'm gonna bring that down. And you can see that that is creating some contrast. The next thing is I'm gonna take the offset, take it both ways until I find something that I like. I'm gonna go this way so that I can keep the plane uh, in sight and the sky's not too blue. The next thing is I don't like how blue the whole image is. And I understand that it's only because most of the sky is uh, blue and it's in the shot. So what I'm gonna do to actually fix that is I'm going to click the second tab right here and I'm gonna go over to temperature and I'm gonna take it towards warm, just like that. And that should allow me later on to bring up the saturation a little bit more so that the whole image isn't orange orange i don't say orange orange so the whole image isn't orange now we're going to take up some mid-tone details i'm going to hit 20 there let's go to about 15 on the color boost that's going to bring us some colors in on this image over here on the side of the building and then the last thing for this image is i'm going to click right back over to the first tab which i guess i really didn't have to do that yes i had to click back over to the first tab I'm gonna bring my saturation up to 73 on this one. And yeah, I like it right there. So that's what I'm gonna to stick to. So I'm going to right click that, generate 3D LUT, and I'm gonna hit two. Boom, same process, go back over to Premiere Pro, um, click over to master, drag Lumetri Color on, go to uh, creative, 
hit that none tab because there's no LUT in there. I'm gonna find the second LUT that I created and open, boom. And let's play that back. Boom, it's nice. All right, so now, again, right here we have two options that we could do. We can either try what we done before, see if our other LUT's gonna work on that. So because it's still inside of my clipboard, I'm gonna do Command, or yeah, Command B to paste it. And I think that actually will work. So boom, yep, that works. It looks really good. So um, I'm gonna try that on the next clip as well. And so to be very clear, all I'm doing is I'm pasting the first LUT that I made onto these other clips uh, because they're similar lighting, similar color, so um, there's no reason it shouldn't work. And it actually worked. It doesn't work every time, but for this instance it does. And so yeah, that's how I would color grade the iPhone footage. So if this video helped you out in any way, if you have any questions, or if you have any other things you would like to learn about, please let me know in the comment section below. I hope this video is very valuable to you. And I wanted to let you guys know that this was just the iPhone 11 Pro Max that I was color grading the footage on. Now, whenever the iPhone 12 Pro Max comes out, I am gonna be doing some videos on that as well. The Dolby Vision um, that the new iPhone has and all of that stuff, we're gonna be diving in talking about that. But I'm still waiting for that phone to come out and I'm gonna go trade this phone in for that one and do some more videos on that. So again, if this video helped you out in any way, please hit that subscribe button. If you have anything else you would like me to do videos on, please let me know in the comment section below. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.